I love it to be able to say that you're a Hollywood actress, <laughs> Melanie. Um, I met you a number of years ago, 2007, I believe, when you won um, Miss India title. Yes. Since then, um, it's like you have exploded on the scene. You've done incredible work, you know, as a model. I mean, like, hello, obviously. <laughs> Um, Bare Essentials to like India Vogue, you name it, right? You've just done a ton of stuff. And of course, you forayed into acting as well. I'm going to go there in a second, but i got to ask you a question. Why did you go into entertainment when you've got an engineering degree <laughs> from Stanford <laughs> University? Oh, that's a question everyone keeps asking me. <laughs> and um, it was just, I'd always wanted to become an actress. Ever since I was a young girl, I'd watch TV and I'd watch movies. And I just have this voice inside of me that said, that's what you need to be doing one day. But coming from an immigrant family, you know, you just focus on education, right? You need to focus on getting a good job, getting a good degree, a good job, and then, you know, supporting your family after school. And theater, the arts was, it just was out of the question. But finally, after I got my engineering degree, I moved to New York City. I was working in corporate America. I was in New York. I was like, let me watch theater. Let me take classes. And that sparked came back to me and I knew I had to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. What, like, what happened at that moment when you knew that, you know, this is what I need to do for a living. Um, I need to not do what I'm doing right now, professionally speaking. How do you deal with kind of that transition when it comes to like your know, parents? The, and you know, it's, it's a typical question <laughs> that you get asked, right? It's a typical question that we ask in our culture. Yeah. When our parents have spent so much money on our education, how do you justify, right? you know, that this is what I want to do with my life. Because, yeah. I mean, from my perspective, I think, you know, I've done what you want, mm -hmm. so now I'm doing me. Mm -hmm. But, like, what was it like for you? Because everyone has a different, ex you know, story yeah. to tell there. Well, I'm pretty stubborn. So <laughs> <laughs> if I have a goal and I really want to do it, I'll find a way to get it done. Mm -hmm. And for my parents, they were just confused. They were just confused. Why do you want to do this? You have a great job. What is entertainment? What is acting? How are you going to support yourself? And I told them, look, I'll pay back all of my student loans, I'll find my health insurance, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be successful and I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then it took me a while, but years later I, I proved that to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And how do they feel now? I mean, you're on like, you've been on two primetime shows, not even one. I mean, that's like insane, right? <laughs> and you're on, obviously, you're, you're shooting right now for the second season of Code, Code Black. Black. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to get you out here because I know how they kind of blanket your schedules when you're doing yeah. TV shows, especially primetime, mm -hmm. right? So how do they feel now? Like, because you kind of, you know, you, you prove that what you wanted to do that you were capable of doing, mm -hmm. right? Right, so my parents are extremely proud right now, especially because I get to play a doctor on TV now, and so my parents are so happy, so <laughs> proud, because I was an engineer, and I'm an actress, and now I'm playing a really smart doctor on TV, so it's the best of both worlds. Absolutely, yeah. my gosh, and you told me a little, um, you know, off camera that <laughs> your parents were like really, really excited, and they, oh my gosh. and they would knock on doors of their yeah. neighbors. Tell me that story, I it's, want to share it with my viewers. It's so embarrassing and so adorable at the same time. But I had this independent movie coming out, and it was a, such a tiny movie. Like, no one would know about it. My dad made flyers and went <laughs> door to door in our neighborhood and told everyone, hey, my daughter is going to be in a movie. <laughs> Come watch. Um, and I was mortified. But it was also, it was so cute. And so, yeah, it just proves that my parents are really proud. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that's what it is, right, uh, Melanie? Like, you know, a lot of us think, God, you know, why do our parents not support our dreams, right? But I get you know, especially, you know, with our parents being immigrants, mm -hmm. how hard it is and how hard it was for them to yep. kind of really establish life. Mm -hmm. And here their kids are wanting to kind of like do something that has no security. Like I get why they feel the way they do. Yep. It's not because that, you know, my p opinion is it's not because they really want to put their foot down as much as it is that they want to ensure that you can take care of you. I agree. Right? I agree. And now they've seen that you can take care of you. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your um, acting career. Sure. Right? Um, so obviously you, you did all, all the modeling in the world, right? Mm -hmm. And how did that foray for you into, you know, kind of the acting genre? Like wh mm -hmm. where did that happen for you? So when I moved to New York, it, I felt like modeling was my gateway into networking and also being in front of the camera. Of course. And practicing. Yes. Um, and I really liked it, but it wasn't fulfilling in the creative sense. But it's great, you get beautiful photographs, it's fun, it's glamorous. Um, but I quickly knew that I didn't want to do that for a living. I wanted to create art 
Right. And I would, I was also a TV host for a couple of South Asian TV networks over there. And I'd be and on this the helps you own, hone your skills, right? It does. Yeah. Just being in front of the camera in general. Yeah. But I'd be going to these film festivals, interviewing people, and my heart was just, I want to be the one creating the art mm -hmm. on the big screen. Yeah. And so I knew that's what I had to pursue. Mm -hmm. So how did you do it? Tell me, t give me a couple of milestones yeah. of how you got from knowing that you need to be on the other side of the camera, uh -huh. right, to where you're sitting today. Like, what, give me a couple of milestones, you know, of your unique journey. Sure. Um, so I was this nerdy engineering student at Stanford. <laughs> um, and Somehow then I, I don't believe that. Uh, yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and one of my friends told me about the Miss Indie America pageant happening. And she said, you should do it. No matter what you're doing in life, it's a great opportunity, great experience. So I did it. I didn't tell anybody about it. But I practiced, you know, I put together, I, I dance and I do martial arts, so I did this cool routine for my talent portion. I love that. My first time doing this sort of thing on stage for a group of strangers. Um, and I ended up winning and just loved the whole experience. Um, so that was milestone number one. Right. Milestone number two was just moving to New York City. And that pageant, they had um, media connections in New York, which allowed me to model and to host. And that was milestone number two. Right. Milestone number three, I'm now still a dorky um, engineer, but I'm working at a management consulting company. And I'm taking acting classes on the side, and I'm performing on stage, and I get scouted by a talent agent. Mm -hmm. And they were baffled, and they said, you're not doing this full time? You still have a full time job? Like, you should be doing this right now. It took me a year to realize that, yes, you're right, I, I, should, I should just do it. It takes courage yeah. to not have a regular paycheck. Yes. Right? Yes. So I get that year. Yes. What happened during that year that really kind of put you in a place where you were ready to not have that regular income? Like, it's, it's a big deal because yeah. we're, it's infused in us right. from, from a young age that that is a really important part of, you know, success for us as South Asians, right? Right. Tell me what happened in that year. It almost sounds like there was like this huge epiphany that happened that took you there. You know, it's, it's kind of a scary story, and not mm -hmm. many people know about this. But I was, again, I was, I was living two lives, essentially. I'd be going to a modeling casting where I had to be in a swimsuit, go back to work, and I'd be wearing a business suit over it. <laughs> and it was just these two bizarre lives. And my week, week, weeknights and weeknights, I was, I was studying, I was performing, and my heart was just going in this direction. Um, I was fortunate for my job to be local and not travel, because mm -hmm. consultants travel all over the world for their work. Yeah. And the day before, I'm supposed to take this case, this project, in the middle of Minnesota mm -hmm. for six months, in the middle of winter. I had a seizure. Oh my gosh, yeah. babe. Yeah. I had a major seizure. and Somehow that was a blessing, right? It was a, yeah, it, it's, the silver lining was I got removed from that project for yeah. two weeks. I was off of work, and it made me realize that it was my body's reaction of telling me that this is not for you. Yes. And if I had done that, there would be other milestones that didn't happen in my acting path. Absolutely. Yeah. So it was a blessing. It's, yeah. Right? As weird as that sounds. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it makes sense that you actually had the courage from that to say that this is what I need to do, right? Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Like, how did you get here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... That matters <laughs> it, it does matter. And yeah. I think, I think it, was, it was a people... I found the people that believed in me. Mm -hmm. So that person that had scouted me out originally, I went back to him and I said, okay, I'm done. Let's do this. And I said, you know what? First step is I need to hone my craft. Yes. I didn't spend all of my, you know, 20 years studying to be an actor. So let me get good at it first. Right. So I enrolled in some pretty serious programs in New York, mm -hmm. and then I would write my own material, and I would, you know, network and just be exposed to everything. And mm -hmm. I did that for about a year and a half. And the person that was helping me from the agency would submit me for little auditions here and there. Yeah. And then I moved to LA in 2011 mm -hmm. temporarily, and um, I got submitted for a project on rules of engagement. Yes. And I it was my first audition in Hollywood. And, and, you I got book, it. and I booked it. Yeah, it was a guest star role, and that's when I also knew that I I'm can meant do this. to be here. Like yeah. the universe is telling me that I'm. Yeah. That this is my destiny. Yeah. Right. So you've had a few milestones since then, mm -hmm. right? 
you're sitting here now at um, Code Black. How did how did that process happen for you? Like, you know, did you have to go through the entire typical audition process and the second audition and the eighth audition, and then book it, or like, how did it work for you? So it was a very rare instance. So everything I've done in the past was, you know, many many layers, and it's yeah. down to you and another girl, and there's the whole network looking at you and deciding, okay, which one do I want? Mm -hmm. So... Another Indian girl or just another girl? Um, just another girl. Mm -hmm. um, in th this case in particular, again, this is really rare. I was in New York. They're casting out of Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm in New York and I go in for my audition on tape. Like we're interviewing right now. They're just tell me to do, do the scenes for the audition on tape and they get it and they send it in and the creator of the show took one look at it and he's like, that's the girl. Mm. He's like, we don't need to audition anybody else. Mm -hmm. Let me call up CBS right now mm -hmm. and get this in front of the entire network and tell them this is the girl we want and we have to get her because I also had two other offers oh, wow. that week that came through. Oh my gosh. So it, it just, it just, everything happened in one week. Serendipitous, right? Yeah. It's crazy in acting and entertainment. Nothing can happen for two years mm -hmm. and then everything happens in a week. Yeah. So why did you, uh, so you have two other offers yeah. You took this one. Tell me why. What was it? You know, um, Code Black is inspired by a documentary mm -hmm. about a real breathing, breathing hospital mm -hmm. and, and real doctors. And I really identified with these heroes, mm -hmm. meaning I want to tell their story. Yeah. So it was, it was a meaningful project. Yes. And it was really good writing. And the characters were really well scripted. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah. You kept, you've come out of your first season, you're in your second season. Mm -hmm. Tell me how it felt working with like some ridiculous talent that's been in the industry for so long, right? As yeah. a newbie. Yeah. Like, were you nervous? Absolutely. Like, like what, what was that first season like for oh you? Oh my gosh. Shooting the pilot was nerve wracking. Yeah. Because yes, you're working with, you're working with Marsha Gay Harden. She leads the show. She's an Oscar winner. She's brilliant. Yes. She's not intimidating by any means. She's the sweetest woman I've ever met and I've learned so much from her. Mm -hmm. But just the, the pressure of being on a Hollywood set mm -hmm. as a pilot. Doing a pilot episode where your show's not proven yet. Yes. And you're forced onto set to pretend you have relationships with eight other cast members and you're doing medicine, you're doing surgery and spitting off this dialogue and trying to prove yourself. So that was scary. But now we're filming season two and it's I mean, yeah, it's, it's much better. <laughs> you, I mean, you found home now, right? You found it's kind home. of the place that you belong in that entire, you know, family, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, what What do you feel has been the most valuable um, experience that you've had shooting this particular show for you, hmm. on a personal level, maybe? Mm hmm Right. Like, what What do you feel that perhaps you've learned about life? Because you You mentioned already that this was a pretty intense drama, mm -hmm. um, it meant something to you. So I'm wondering if that translated over into, you know, how you view life, perhaps. That's a great question. Um, I think what it's, it, what it's taught me is that it is just one part of life. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to make it, it is everything and you neglect everything else happening in your life. But once you have something and it's solid, you can take a step back and realize, well, I have I have my family, mm -hmm. and I have my husband, yes. and I have my home, mm -hmm. and this is just, it is a job, but it's my life work, Yes. but you can, you can have both if you really want to, yes. and I've met people on set that do have both, mm -hmm. because we all think that you can't, mm. right? Yeah. Do you have that sense too sometimes? You, you know, um, I, I've been brought up to feel that it has to be one way or the other, yeah. but my instincts have always told me that I can ha I can do or be anything that I want. Yeah. But I just have to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes it's a little bit harder. Definitely. It's kind of like, you know, before I became a mother, mm -hmm. right? And I've got like all this freedom, it's all about me, right? It's like all about me. All of a sudden then I become a mom, right? And now all of a sudden there's someone else that's more important than me. Mm -hmm. And I have to I, I can't be spontaneous. I have to plan me around, yeah. you know, this 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 other important aspect that's in my life which is my child yeah. right and you know people telling me oh no, now you're a mom now you're not gonna be able to do this that, and, the other. and I'm like excuse my language but F you <laughs> I can do whatever I want right all I have to do is better at planning it right and maybe I can't be as spontaneous 
mm -hmm. you know, as perhaps I want to. I know that you, this resonates with you, yes. right? Because you're, you, you know, you're a wife. You have family ties. You've got important people in your life that are mm -hmm. important. There are other aspects of life that are important to you. But there's also this passion. This that is now a profession for you. Mm -hmm. All these things matter, mm -hmm. right? And either you decide that you know I'm going to put all my effort into one thing, or I'm going, to, I'm going to work that much harder and make all of it happen. Yeah. Because I deserve everything. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down to your perception of yourself and do you feel that you're deserving of everything mm -hmm. and if, if you if the answer is yes you'll find the way and you have you find a way right you found that way I adore you I thank you for your time thank you yeah, honestly like I'm so happy that you fo you followed kind of like that voice in you that was saying Melanie just do it be who you need to be, be the greatest version of you. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly where you are and where you are headed. And I can't wait for the magic that you're gonna do out there. And I love calling you Hollywood actress, <laughs> Melanie Chandra. Thank you for joining me on my show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Okay.